Hey guys, what's up? This is Stock Retail coming back to you. Uh, by now you've probably seen that Friday we got some pretty significant news on the conversion vote for APE going back to AMC and also for the reverse split and for kind of a new, um, a new share authorization for Adam and the board. Uh, before I get into all of that, I just want to share a little bit about, about what we'll do today. First off, if you are new to me, you maybe haven't heard, uh, if you followed me for a minute, you've heard me say on almost every video, uh, first of all, in AMC, I believe we should have no trust me bros. Like, we're not going to take opinion, we're going to take facts and data. We're going to do DD, we're going to source things. If someone's look at, looking at you in the face and saying something pretty, um, I don't know, e either exciting or scary, then the first question should always be, okay, what's your data? What's your fact? What's your source? How are you backing that up? So today we're going to have a discussion on the vote that I am going to stick to uh, the actual language in the filings. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to source that. Uh, I do think this is pretty critical because if you'll stick around to the end, um, I do believe there's a very compelling case on which way we should vote. The math makes it pretty obvious to me. However, I want to also be fair to all of you because I do think that there's room for good people and good apes to disagree on this. So rather than tell anyone how to vote, um, <clears throat> I am going to just share the data, share the math, and let you come to your own conclusions. I'll probably share how I'm voting, uh, but I also think, again, that's going to be fairly obvious here. But, you know, I, I want to be clear that I think it's very, very important that you learn to do your own DD, that you go read the filings. Um, one of the reasons that I have come to some really strong conclusions is not only did I read the entire filings for the vote itself, I also read all the filings on APE last summer when it came out. And you're going to see in this video um, how I'm going to tie back even to last year's filings and some really, really critical information that I have not seen anyone saying on any of the platforms, Twitter, YouTube, um, <clears throat> I don't know, Facebook, Telegram, whatever, uh, there's a really key wrinkle in all of this that I don't think anyone's made the case about yet. Um, if they have, then then great. Um, I don't mind not being the first. I'd rather be correct than be first, which is also why I've taken some time and I haven't done this video until now. Um, the other thing is, with apologies, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat, so if you hear me coughing as we go through this, I just apologize in advance. But all right, let's get to this. So what are we going to cover? I mentioned we'll cover the proxy materials. Um, as always, I'm going to source all of this. I'll show you where I got it. Uh, I'll just kind of give you that right off the bat. I'm getting the filing straight from the SEC website. You can go to Edgar. Um, it's like the name, SEC Edgar. Or you can go to AMC's Investor Relations page and get all these filings and check them yourself. But I'm also going to link them at the end. You'll be able to take screenshots and go find those links. Um, I'm going to cover the vote process and I'm going to cover the meeting <coughs> itself. But most importantly, like I said, I'm going to cover the implications of what a no vote will mean and what a yes vote will mean. What does that mean to dilution? What does that mean to the squeeze? What does that mean to shares and price and all those things? And um, you know, what does that mean also to the sort of tools that the board and Adam will have in their toolbox? Uh, okay, so the key documents, there's actually a file that's basically the notice of the meeting. There's the proxy materials. Some of you might be saying, okay, what's a proxy? So um, <coughs> if you're not going to the meeting in person, then um, like for example, back in the day when I was, kind of, I've told you some of you I'm a mid-level, I was a mid-level exec at like a Dow Jones level company. Um, if I couldn't make a meeting, Sometimes if it was an important meeting, they'd say, hey, if you can't attend, you need to send a proxy. So a proxy with someone who would go for me, but basically represent my point of view. Um, in this case, what that means, it's very normal with shareholder votes. You know, it's not often that you're going to go attend the shareholder meeting yourself. And so you turn in your vote through usually your broker. You're going to even just have usually just buttons you can click right on the Internet that they're going to send you. Um, that registers what you want voted for your shares. And then the, that vote goes through kind of by proxy. In other words, you're not there, but your vote is still represented accordingly. So you're going to have a chance to vote. Um, your vote will be represented. And that's why it's so important to get educated and understand what it is you're voting. And then I mentioned I'm going to go through the actual eight filings from last summer. It's really critical that I think we all understand, um, like I said, some pretty key data points that I think maybe people have sort of been e either haven't read or are missing. And by the way, here I want to pause too and just cover. Um, 
I'm seeing a lot of misinformation out there on discussions on the vote. And now I also want to be careful to say not all misinformation is with intent, right? There can be really good people who maybe have a point of view that just wasn't yet fully informed and might have gotten something wrong. So maybe I would just implore anyone, if you haven't read the full filings, I'd be really thoughtful about sharing really strong points of view if you haven't even read the filings, right? So how can you have a strong opinion when you haven't done the research? That's one. But then to the people who are actually spreading lies about some of this stuff, it's gonna become really obvious with this video right here because I've gone through, I'm gonna source all this, and honestly, there's a, there's a certain argument that I see out there which is gonna look really, really stupid. I'm not gonna lie. It's just, I, I won't even have to call it stupid. The data will call it stupid for me. Okay, but let's kind of cover, um, you know, like I said, let's go back to facts. I'll stop calling people stupid here. Um, reminder, first of, all, first of all, all shares are created equal. What do I mean by that? So if you looked at the filings from last summer, um, you know that one ape equals one AMC. And that was really critical at the time. There was DD we had done. In fact, I'm going to share with you the DD I had posted clear back, uh, I guess, last August, I think. Um, and we'll have that here in a minute. It's out there on Reddit. When we did the DD, one of the things you would have caught was um, often a preferred equity share does not have voting rights. So the fact that Adam and the board conveyed voting rights onto our APE was actually kind of a big deal. And it's what made APE have um, kind of a per particular, particularly strong value and why, you know, Adam said over and over, APE really should have traded um, at the same price as AMC because it not only represented equity in the company and ownership stake in the company, it also carried with it the voting rights that a normal common share would have. So that was kind of unusual, but now, fast forward to the vote we're about to have, just so that everyone's aware, one share of AMC equals one vote. One share of APE equals one vote. If you had a thousand shares of AMC, that's a thousand votes. A thousand shares of APE, that's a thousand votes. So every share you own, doesn't matter which ticker, is one vote. That's really important to understand. Uh, we talked about the proxy vote. You should be getting information from your broker. Some people, if you've registered your shares, will get information from your um, registration agent. And so there's language in the proxy materials that talk about that. Want to cover and highlight here, um, if you were to read these materials, you'll see it's really, really clear that Adam and the board want every single share to vote. I mean, just look, they've put it in bold. They put it in all caps. I'll just read this here. Your vote is very important, regardless of the number of shares of common stock and or apes basically that you own okay all bold all caps your vote is very important so whether you vote no whether you vote yes adam and the board are asking that you vote every single share you have all right um for the meeting itself there's a lot of language in the filing that that talks about attending and sort of how you can get access to attend in person um, essentially your sort of proxy materials kind of are proof that you own shares and you were part of the vote. And so it's almost like a, a ticket to get in. So look up that language a little bit. Um, if, you, if it's not clear, you know, check with the company. You, know, you can talk to investor relations, they have the email, or you can um, talk to your broker to make sure you're getting all the materials. <clears throat> but for those who are not going to fly to Kansas City or drive or whatever, if you're not going to Kansas City for the meeting, um, there will be a way to listen in on the internet. Now you can see that's listen only on the internet. Uh, versus in person, I don't know if they'll have kind of a Q&A session or not. There is language in the filing that says you need to own your shares by February 8th. So just be really clear, if you want to vote, you need to own shares in either ticker by February 8th. Oh, also, even if um, there's language in there that the Adam and the board have the opportunity to delay the meeting if they would see fit. That can be maybe they want to communicate more about the vote. That can be weather related, business related. If they have any reason, they postpone. But look at this language here that just says, you know, even if they postpone the meeting, you need to own your shares by February 8th if you want to be able to vote. So, all right, what is the vote um, entailing? I'll just draw your attention to the two bigger numbers on the screen. This also, by the way, is the count of the current float. So 
There are 517 million and change AMC out there right now. There are 929 million, or call it 930 basically million of APE out there right now. That's going to matter, and I'm going to show you all the math in a little bit on how many shares there are and how the vote will go. And we're going to talk about dilution. That's one thing that's on a lot of people's mind um, and how that's all going to relate. So remember these numbers, basically 517 and 930. Uh, okay, so you're going to see language about depository shares, so I thought I'd pause and talk about that a little bit. That's also going to be in the DD that I'll share with you that I did last summer. Um, basically, the preferred equity share itself, so forget it for a second, a preferred equity share of AMC is actually worth 100 shares of AMC. But you're saying, wait, retail, I, I thought one ape is worth one AMC. Well, how did they get to that? So. An APE is actually something called a depository share. They're, they've got the preferred equity shares on deposit with computer share. And then what we actually received were shares that represented a piece of that. Each APE is like a fraction of a preferred equity share. So one APE is one one hundredth of a preferred equity share. And a preferred equity share is worth 100 AMC. So if you kind of multiply by 100 and then divide by 100, you get back to one. Um, <clears throat> And that's how one ape equals one AMC, and, and then why the vote is also one to one. I'm going to talk through also how those preferred equity shares are going to become worth 10 AMC instead of 100. That's basically just them affecting the reverse split. So we'll talk through all of that. So if you see language in there about depository and uh, depository shares and all that, that's just going all the way back to last summer of how ape was set up. Okay, some of you might have seen information out there. There's some other apes that have talked a little bit about uh, the QCIP number. So there is confirmation in the filing that APE and AMC will have a new QCIP. There is some language out there. People have started to do some DD on does that, you know, force covering of shorts or not. I'm not going to go into that here in this call. Uh, I will just admit that I've seen that language out there. I've seen that DD um, in theory. Basically, what I see is that shorts are forced to cover at the time this converts over to a new QSIP and that naked shorts essentially get, uh, I'll call it stranded, but they will um, show up on the books. There's, that gets into a whole lot of weeds that I'm not going to cover here today, um, <clears throat> in part because I'm not the expert and in part because I don't want to get into hopium. I'm not at all going to say that this is going to force mass covering and you know we've won and the whole thing's over. But do research QSIP numbers what that means to APE, what that means to AMC. Um, just I always caution, you know, every, sing every time I've seen a silver bullet solution be offered out there, I I've never once seen it come true. So all I'll confirm is that APE and AMC will get a new QCIP number, uh, a new shared QCIP. That's actually in AMC's filing. <coughs> all right, so you'll see language about cross-conditioning. Um, this is critical because what it means is um, they're saying if both the reverse split and the conversion are not approved, then neither will be approved. It has to be all yes or it's going to be all no. And I'm going to talk a little bit later in the video about what a no means. I've mentioned that a couple times. But I want to also just ask you to consider when you say no to something, you're, saying, you're actually saying yes to something else. Um, and we're going to talk about what that is. So if you vote no to either proposal, the reverse split or the conversion, if enough people were to vote no, then neither of them is going to happen. So if you say, I don't like the reverse split, well, then the conversion is not going to happen, or vice versa. Or if you say yes to both, then if enough people say yes, then they're both happening. So you'll see that language cross-conditioned, and that's what that means. <clears throat> okay, we're almost rounding the corner into the process and the math. I just want to highlight one last thing. You can go find, or you can screenshot this here. There is conversion language that helps me understand exactly how this is going to work. That I'm, I'm going to simplify this, so I'm not going to read this to you. That's where you can pause this and read this if you want to see the whole thing. But the, the following slides are going to be built off of some of this language and some of the rest of the filing. So if you want to see AMC's actual language on the conversion, that's here. Otherwise, let's simplify this and jump forward. Uh, it gets a little technical, and this is one area where I've heard people say it wrong, although this is an area where the people saying it incorrectly, eh, in the end, it kind of doesn't matter. It, it all comes out. The bottom line is everything's one-to-one. -one. 
but the actual sequence of events that kind of, um, I don't know, was a surprise to me, but this is not the big surprise of this video, by the way. The big surprise is still coming later. Um, first off, the reverse split for AMC kind of happens first. So divide AMC shares by 10, you know, that 517 million I showed you before. Um, but also, you'll see, and I'm going to show you, there's language in here around a vote on the share count. So that's probably a lot of the debate you're seeing out there. There's some debate on, do we really want to give Adam and the board more shares? And I'm going to um, work through some math with you to show, actually even call into question, is it even more shares or not? I know that sounds crazy, but hold, hold that. So first, AMC reverse splits. Second, there's more AMC created. Third, the, um, I, I guess it's not saying third here, but anyway, the third thing is then those preferred equity shares, instead of being worth 100 AMC, they're in a way reverse split down to being worth 10 AMC. And then the ape gets converted. So it, ape converting is kind of the last thing, and that's getting a little wonky and detailed and splitting hairs. But the bottom line to take away from all this is if you have one AMC, sorry, one ape, that's going to turn into one, I'll call it new AMC. Confirmation here from the filing itself that I, what I've just said is true, that it's one to one. Let's just walk through this example that they give us. So it says here, if you hold 100 shares of common stock, so that's the AMC ticker, and 100 shares of APE, that obviously the APE ticker, then you're gonna end up with 20 shares of this new common stock. So the 100 plus 100 is 200, divide by 10 for the reverse split, you get down to 20. Um, and you can just see that language here. So whether you wanna use this conversion language I showed you that I've described sort of the step one, step two, step three kind of thing, or if you even just wanna look at the example they've shown, it's very, very clear, it's one to one. I've seen, I've heard in space calls, I've seen some tweets, people trying to talk about other funny math that it's not one to one and, and valuations and stuff. Don't follow that stuff. It's really clear in the filing, it's one to one. Okay. Um, if there is a yes vote, which it's my understanding it's just a simple majority, uh, we should all fact check that because um, I didn't screenshot that, but I'm just telling you my understanding there. Regardless, if there's a yes vote and this passes, um, I guess you'd have to get into the technicalities of something called a quorum, um, but just means if there's enough votes. If there's enough votes and yeses hold the majority, then actually, so you know, not only is 314 sort of the day of the vote, um, it's also the day, the last day that ape would even be traded. After 314, there is no ape, and there's fr frankly no old AMC. There's now the new AMC with all of the ape converted into it. So you can see their language very clearly. We expect apes to cease trading and be delisted from NYSE shortly after the effective time of the amendment proposals. If they're approved, we currently expect the last day of trading to be March 14th. Okay, so if there's a yes vote, it's basically immediate that APE converts. There won't be fractional shares. So what I mean here is if you owned, let's say 11 APE, that's not going to turn into 1.1 of these new AMC. That 0.1 left over is going to be paid out to you in cash. So you'll see this repeats in the proxy materials. Ah, uh, gosh, I think I saw like three, four, five times. It's very clear, no fractional shares. Any fractions will get paid out in cash. Um, you can screenshot this if you want to go find my Reddit on Ape last summer uh, because we're about to go in deep on the math of the vote. And to understand the math of the vote, you actually need to have reviewed all of the materials from last year and even materials going as far back as 2013. That's going to really matter here in a few. So you can find me out on Reddit. You can see which sub that was in or you can see the link here. You can see it's under stock underscore retail, so my, my username's a tiny bit different on Reddit. Um, <clears throat> by the way, if you're following me on YouTube but not on Twitter, I'm pretty active on Twitter, so that's stock retail there also. In this uh, post, I have a bunch of screenshots of a Google Doc I had made. At, at one point, I had shared that Google Doc with apes as well. Um, it's deep, it's long, but it's got all the information that I think you might want to really understand ape. But as always, I also encourage you to just read for yourself. In that DD, you would find that, first off, you need to know when APE was created, 
Um, so first of all, I'm saying just how many preferred shares are there? When Ape was created, that was 10 million preferred equities shares, representing a possibility of 1 billion Ape. So we could have had 1 billion Ape in total. Now remember, let's go back real quick. Where do we have that? Um, did I already fly by it? There we go. So far, see the 929.8 million. So Adam has issued 929.8 million of the ape, but he actually could have done up to a billion. When they made ape, they did 10 million preferred equity shares. Remember, it's times 100 to get to ape, so that's a billion ape. But look at this, and this, by the way, goes all the way back to 2013, long before the apes came along, long before the squeeze, long before COVID, etc., etc. Adam and the board have authority to make 50 million preferred equity shares. Now remember that times 100, that's 5 billion, you know, like APE or AMC, basically. <clears throat> that is going to really matter on the math here in a minute. So in your mind, take away 10 of the 50. When APE got created, 10 of these 50 got used. That means they still have 40 left. 40 million preferred equity shares, they have authority to make at any time. They do not need our permission. They already have the authority which would represent 4 billion AMC or APE. So you know, at any time this whole process, Adam could already have issued all of these. And he has not. So all the people talking about dilution this and dilution that and should we give Adam shares, he already has them. You need to read the filings. He already, today, without permission, could issue 4 billion more APE if you want. You can just create a bunch more. That's going to matter. So let's go through that. So did you know, I guess I've just tipped my hand on that, Adam and the board created a possibility for 1 billion ape. That was the, they used 10 million preferred equity shares times 100 AMC per preferred equity share that they represent. Um, of those I just told you, he's, he's already done almost all of them, but not quite. And then I'm reminding you here that I just told you, but Adam and the board already have the ability to issue another 40 million preferred equity shares, or which would be the equivalent of like 4 billion of either APE or AMC, kind of look at it either way. Those were approved in 20 th 2013. Let's walk through that really clearly on the math so we know how many shares there are um, <clears throat> and what that looks like with a no vote and what that looks like with a yes vote. Okay, I showed you in the filing. I screenshot that. I'm going to give you the link. They've communicated as of today there's 517 and a half million basically AMC, about 930 million APE. There's also, and you can find this in the filing, there's also 6.59 million unissued AMC. So Adam and team have a bunch held back. They could either issue or sometimes they hold those for executive compensation. So we've all talked about you know the um, stock options that these guys get. You can even find a whole video where I review how many shares does Adam have and what were his stock options and all of that. So there's actually, if you didn't know, there's some more AMC that hasn't been issued. It's not in the float. Then there's this authorized unissued ape. I mentioned technically he could get to a billion ape if he wanted and they haven't gotten all the way there yet. But then this is the piece that I have not seen anyone, nobody on YouTube, nobody on Reddit, nobody on Twitter and you know, hey, if I'm wrong and, and you did some DD or you know somebody who did some DD, then fine and frankly awesome that they've done it. But this piece, no one's talking about and especially people pushing the no vote are not talking about the fact he does not need new permission. He already has, so these are in millions, but that's 4 billion equivalent shares. So he has 40 million more preferred equity units that are not issued which would represent basically 4 billion shares. So a no vote means the total possible shares, so from these three first buckets that those already exist, which I think that's what apes are mostly focused on, apes are just looking at those three and forgetting the authority that he's had since 2013 to issue these other 40 million preferred equity, which would represent 4 billion shares. So the total possible shares he already has is 5.524.2 billion. Remember that number, because I'm about to prove to you with math that the share count he's asking for is actually less than this. Yes, that's the huge surprise that no one's telling you and all the people saying, how could we possibly give Adam more shares? They don't realize 
he's going to end up with less shares with this vote. I'm going to show you how with math. Um, all right, but so important to know, if you're still a no vote after hearing that, and that's okay, I'll respect you. Um, you know, one of the things I said in another video before the holidays that I did on the vote is, whether we agree or disagree, the ape movement matters to me. And all people equal, us being for each other. Now, if it's someone spreading misinformation on purpose, honestly, I'm going to tear them a new one. Like, seriously, if you've seen me out there these two years, you know I will use facts and data, and I will out them. So if you're listening to this and you've been one of the liars, trust me, bro, on this one. I will say trust me, bro, here. I will out you, and I will tear your lies apart with facts and data that I will source. Good luck. Okay, but if you're an ape who genuinely wholeheartedly believes in a no, and I know some, I know some who are my friends, um, who I respect, and so I just want to be as respectful as possible with any of you who are still a no, but I want to ask you to do, at least just look at what does a no mean. So <clears throat> I shared in the video before the holidays, AMC needs access to capital. They're going to need cash. You know, and I shared some positive uh, reasons for that. For example, they just bought the Boston Arclight. Um, that's about to open up this spring, right in time for, you know, the heavy slate of movies we've got this year. They're going to make profits off that um, property. And I think that was a sound investment. I'm glad that Adam, as a leader, saw that opportunity and made a good investment. I believe they're going to get a return on that. Well, what is an investment? It's putting in cash into something you hope will pay off in the future. You have to have the cash to do that. And so far, we know that Adam has been using Ape to have the cash the company needs for investments and for debt and all those kinds of things. So if you vote uh, no to the conversion and the reverse split and all of that, you are actually voting yes. You're voting yes to saying to Adam, you're going to go ahead and continue to dilute with Ape and any future preferred equity shares that you're going to create and remember, the last ape he sold was mostly under a dollar. Um, so I, I guess here I have a hard time with the dilution argument because people saying, I want no dilution, so therefore I'm voting no, you're actually voting for worse dilution. Go look at the video I did before the holidays that demonstrates that in deeper detail on kind of the math of that. But I think I'm showing you here, you'll just remember if you're giving him a no on conversion, then all he's got left is the 70 million ape plus the potential for 4 billion more kind of equivalent with the preferred equity units. And he's going to say, okay, you know, I, I can't go against my shareholders, but I'm also not allowing this company to go bankrupt and there's investments we may need to make. I'm going to have to dilute that way. So what does a yes look like? Well, okay, we've already covered the math on what shares there are today, but if that happens, if we vote yes, um, all of those existing shares get smushed into this AMC, this 1.447.4 billion. Um, that's all in the filing as well, as I mentioned. And if you remember, he's asking for 550 million shares. I'm kind of correcting for the reverse split here. So consider that basically five and a half billion. So of the five and a half billion, or if you want to just divide by 10 on all of this, uh, the reason, by the way, I'm not doing the reverse split on, on these two slides, let me go back, um, is I want to compare apples to apples. So either we need to view both in a sort of divide by 10 world, or we need to view both in today's numbers. And it gives us a fair comparison of the shares. So if you kind of consider how many shares he's asking for, the 550 million, and that's where people are saying, why would we give him all these shares and all of that? Um, that equates to like 550 million post reverse split or multiply by 10, you get your five and a half billion now. If you take all the existing shares now, so I said smush those together, get this basically 1.45 billion, then what's left, he's got 4.05 billion to use. Well, what did I show you he had left right now if we do nothing? Actually, I'm going to show you that in a minute. What's the difference? So, yes vote. Uh, total possible shares is the 5.5 billion, or if you want to call it 550 million after the um, reverse split. So, a yes vote means, one, you're going to dilute with AMC and, and really kind of a post-reverse split AMC, right? So, a higher price. And here, let's compare apples to apples again. So if we say he was selling Ape 
you know, before the holidays at even as low as basically, I'll call it 70 cents a share. Today, as I filmed this, AMC is worth about $5 a share. So I show you in that video before the holidays if you want to go find it. Um, I think I even linked that actually in here. That it's as much as like a 90% savings on dilution if we give him the ability to sell something worth a lot more. That's the reason Shorty hammered Ape so hard. They knew it was his access to capital. And I have a feeling, you know, when you play chess, you're several moves ahead. He probably knew they were going to do that and baited him into it. I don't know. If you don't want to sort of be a fanboy, you can say, fine, he, he didn't know that, but now he's doing another counter move. Whatever you want to call it. Selling a $5 share versus selling a $0.70 cent share, I don't think I have to convince you that that's a lot less dilution. But what's more, in this scenario, so I said I'd show you the math, he has 24 million less shares. So if your argument is, I don't want dilution, one, he's going to have way less dilution selling shares at a much higher price. So it's already a terrible argument. Two, he's going to have less shares. So here's the thing. People are getting you focused on, oh, you're voting to give him more shares. We don't want to give him more shares. I've just shown you he already has more than that now. We're actually voting to kind of clean this all up, bring it all back together. And the net of it is he actually has t the equivalent of 24.2 million less shares. So not only can he sell at a higher price, which means less dilution, he also actually has access to less shares, which means less dilution. That's a big freaking deal, guys. And I don't think anyone has shown you that. And I'm showing you, I'm sourcing this. You can get to all of this between last year's filings, between the prospectus on AMC itself that goes back to 2013, and between the proxy filings now. If you actually read all this, this is indisputable. He has access to more shares now than he would have if we vote yes. I know that sounds crazy, but it's from all the filings. I'm sourcing it. It's not opinion. The other thing just to think about, um, let, let's just say, so he's got this kind of just over $4 billion um, unissued if we vote yes. You know, I said add another $24 million, so it gets closer to $4.1 billion um, if we vote no. But think about $4 billion shares at, or, or um, let's, let's kind of uh, use, I'm just sorry, I'm just thinking through my head on kind of a non-reverse split price. Let's say AMC was like at, I don't know, five bucks for easy math. And it kind of is at five bucks. Um, <clears throat> Four billion shares at five bucks is access to $20 billion. I'm going to talk in a little bit about my own speculation of what he can do with that. And frankly, I don't think he's going to use all of that. But $20 billion he'd have access to. Versus four billion at, let's say, 70 cents. You can just hear that's, that's a whole lot less. Okay. That's like, what, 2.8 billion or something. So... That's where I'm telling you, it's as much as like 90% savings. Uh, go look at that other video if you don't believe me. Far less dilutive to vote yes. So again, I really respect if you're a genuine ape and you just can't bring yourself to a yes for whatever reason, but I'm telling you, if your argument is dilution, he's getting less shares and he's getting them at a higher value. Both of those things are less dilutive. So, summary of the vote outcomes. No vote means more shares available for dilution and at a much lower price, kind of gone over all that. A no means he has 5.524 billion possible shares, kind of covered that, um, because you've got to count that he already has authority for the rest of the preferred equity shares. That, that's, that ship has sailed, guys. That was 2013. Um, a yes vote means we bring that down. Yes, again, I said we bring that down to five and a half billion kind of pre-reverse split. If you want to correct for reverse split again, that's 550 million. So that's 24 million less shares. Again, correcting for the reverse split there. All right, so some speculation. I already talked about um, a yes vote means access to 20 billion or, you know, if AMC, uh, cost of borrow is crazy high, right? You guys have seen that. If shorts start getting trapped a little bit and cover, um, then... You know, maybe he has access to a lot more money. You know, I, I just for the heck of it, I went and looked and uh, saw that Paramount, their market capitalization right now is $15 billion. 
pretty interesting to me that if AMC's debt is five billion, give or take, I'm just kind of rounding there, and Paramount, um, I guess this is unfair of me because you'd probably have to pay a premium, but you know, basically the cost of Paramount plus AMC being debt free, Adam could do those two things with these shares. Boom, debt free, and you own Paramount. Like, you guys understand, this guy is not a joker. Like he's savvy. Please go review that video from before the holidays where I talk about access to capital and how sound investors use that to build value. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just I'm, I'm repeating myself a little bit, but just the fact that it's less dilutive to vote yes and the fact that we know he's going to make sound investment decisions. I feel like he's shown that over multiple years now. He's demonstrated his ability to lead. I said in the other video too, if you don't trust him, like if your argument is you don't believe in Adam, any financial advisor anywhere is going to tell you, you should not be invested in this stock. Never invest in the stock of a company where you don't trust the leaders. That's just sound advice. So honestly, anybody who's attacking him, I doubt you right off the bat because, you know, it's one thing to attack an idea, right? Like maybe you disagree with some of what he's doing, fine. But to attack the man himself just tells me, I, I honestly doubt that you own shares if you're out there doing that. Um, a yes vote offers far faster, less dilutive path to being debt free. Uh, I've covered in other videos, we do not have to be debt free to beat the shorts. Um, there are plenty of companies, look at Apple, look at Nike, look at Target, you know, look at Amazon. There are plenty of companies that have debt and are making profits. The key is positive cash flows, positive earnings. Um, and I, I will revisit soon, but AMC's uh, underlying fundamentals are provably better than pre-COVID. And I'm just talking like you can take this straight out of their earnings. If you look at various expenses like rents, um, margins on how much they keep of admissions and how much they have to give back to studios, uh, how much we're paying per ticket, a lot of other things. AMC's business model is actually better post-COVID. So even if movies don't get all the way back to pre-COVID levels, uh, AMC is going to be profitable. I believe that strongly. Now that's a forward-looking statement, right? That's opinion. I'm here on the page called Speculation. I'm sharing with you my opinions. But it's not opinion that those um, expense items and revenue items are improved. And I've done a video on that once. I'll do a new one just to kind of simplify it. But I guess I'm just being clear. We don't need to be debt-free to beat the shorts. We need to be profitable. But it still is pretty awesome to be debt-free, and that's a pretty healthy company, right? So if you want him to get the company debt-free, it's going to take far less dilution to do it with a yes vote. So I guess that's another consideration for me. And then just want to share some squeeze thoughts because the obvious, um, uh, what should I call it? Uh, I don't know, reply to a lot of this information is, okay, retail, why don't I just sell all my AMC and buy Ape? Now, first off, I always say do what's right for you. I cannot tell you what to do with your portfolio. Like, you need to decide what you're doing. But some reasons for me that I am holding my AMC, you know, I have added Ape, that's for sure, but I'm holding my AMC um, because we know that the cost to borrow is crazy high for AMC right now, right? So I suppose there's some FOMO that I'm describing, but like I don't want to wake up and have Shorty go, all right, I'm sick of burning this cash to borrow these shares. I'm going to start covering and off it runs and I'm only an ape. So yeah, that's a FOMO argument, but nonetheless, it is based on math. Go look at my video on how much cash, cash is Shorty burning. And I did that video when cost to borrow was even much lower. Um, you know, some other things too, I just think, you know, when Adam talks checkmate, if, if they were to cover AMC right now, then um, that's going to make Adam's, and we all vote yes on the conversion, and that's going to make Adam's cost of capital even lower. Because imagine him being able to sell, again, I'm going to use a non-reverse split number. You know, right now AMC is at five. What if AMC was at 20? And now he's selling at $20 a share. Or, or you know, geez, what if it's at 200? What if it's at 1,000 and we get some crazy squeeze, right? If they start covering AMC right now and we convert, they are absolutely padding AMC's pocketbooks because of that access to capital. So they're stuck. Um, but on the other hand, they're burning cash daily. Go look at Ortex, go look at Fintel, go look at Interactive Brokers, go look at Webull. There's a lot of different numbers on cost to borrow, but the point is it's crazy high. They're burning cash daily. My broker is offering me, we're getting close to I haven't even checked in a few days, but we were already getting close to 60% a year, but that is paid daily. Um, 
they're burning a ton of cash. On the reverse side, if they cover APE right now, they kind of mess up the arbitrage for themselves. Um, you can kind of go look up what's arbitrage and all that. I'm not going to cover that here. They're just stuck all over the place. If they don't cover, they're in trouble because APE's about to close off. If they cover, it kind of messes up things they'd like to do. If they cover AMC, it messes them up and gives Adam access to capital. They're stuck. There's a reason he called it checkmate, in my opinion. Um, all right, links. So I mentioned the video I did that just kind of talks about access to capital. And there's a screen in here as well that you're not seeing here, but um, a little bit in the video where there's kind of a, a spreadsheet, basically, form I do to show you how I get to um, that just significant savings in dilution if we do the conversion. <clears throat> there's a lot of filings, guys. So when I tell people, hey, I'm not sure you read all the filings from last summer. I mean, just look at all these and the vote itself. I know these links are ridiculous. One of these days, I'll maybe just start linking in the comments or something. Um, screenshot this, go to those, or the easiest way is just go to Edgar and go look up all the filings from last summer and then go look up the filing for the vote right now. But you will find that the math I've given you on the shares is provable. It's not debatable. It's provable. It's in all of the filings. Um, that is not a trust me, bro. I'm saying it's there. You can fact check it all you want. I know I'm right. As always, though, I always end with, with all these complicated things. Um, whether you vote no, whether you vote yes, he does have access to capital. That is one of the reasons. Um, between that and the fact that the industry is improving fast. You know, I'm going to do another forecast video soon. I've told you guys from here forward... We're going to see a run of movies that you have not seen since pre-COVID. That also is not a trust me, bro. I've shown you in other videos where you can go fact check that. You can go look at the entire list of movies being released at the industry forecasts behind those movies. We're about to set record after record of sort of post-COVID, um, which we're already doing right now. This is already going to be the strongest Q1 we've ever had post-COVID. It's just like not even close. It's way over last year. You can go check that. Um, <clears throat> so I believe this company is not going bankrupt. There are more movies coming now than ever since pre-COVID. And if you look at 2024, it continues to get even bigger. I believe in the apes. I know you guys are holding. I feel you with me. I'm here with you. I believe it costs shorts to hold their position. That's provable. My broker is offering me tons of money to loan my shares. I've said no so far because I don't want to loan my shares to the shorts. But I know it's costing them because of that. I know it's real. So I can wait. Whether you believe in a no vote here, whether you believe in a yes vote, as long as you believe in the apes, I believe we're going to win. I just hope that you understand that it's important to come back to data and facts and that a yes vote actually is the least dilutive path for AMC and that actually it means he has access to less shares. Logic, data, facts matter, but ultimately what matters the most is the fact that we are shoulder to shoulder arm in arm for some positive change. I'm here with you. Let's go.